you guys get done a little early today, huh? Getting it in? We started a lot earlier. Yeah. It was just so hot yesterday. Yeah. We just we just went real early. Yeah. And just tried to beat that heat. Yep. What about this matchup with uh, Illinois? Is there anything that's jumped out on the film as you looked at them a little bit more throughout the week? Uh, just their physicality. I, mean, they're, I know I've mentioned it, but it's just so rare to play a team that's that veteran, that mature. You know, it's left tackle and center and right tackle, five-year starters. That's defense where they're very physical, run the ball, and uh, very sound special teams, incredible punter, incredible kicker. Uh, when you've got great specialists, you know, it, it can do a lot of great things for you on special teams, the, and uh, they, they've, done, they've got those things. The the matchup in the trenches, the D-line versus the O-line on, on both sides, is that kind of the, the key matchup in this game, you think? It always is. Yeah. It's probably a little more – uh, focal this week just because you know that's, that's how they hang their hat that's what we hang our hat on so uh, we're both very committed to that so it'll be interesting to see the dynamics of how that plays out we saw Frank Harris have a pretty good end of the season last year how's import how important is it for him to continue to carry that momentum forward this season well he's had a great spring and he's, he's a lot more confident and uh, so he knows who he is we know what he is so we're, we're, we know how to coach him better than we did earlier in the year. Um, so we expect him to play well. Jeff, you've talked a lot about the depth on the defensive line and wanting to be three deep. How do you sort of manage that rotation through a game? Do you want to split the snaps pretty evenly? Or do you want the starters playing the ball for the game? How's it going to play out? Oh, uh, there's matchup decisions there. There's conditioning with each player. Um, they're all just kind of uniquely different. Um, so. It's, there's no like perfect recipe because uh, there's also just the element of football. You know, somebody's gonna get nicked up pretty quick, and all those hours you spent playing that perfect formula just went right out the window. So, uh, but yeah, we we've, we've we've got a plan in place for that. Uh, if they get on the plane, they better expect to play. Does that apply also to you know linebackers, safeties, corners? Like, do you want to rotate at those positions as well? Uh, it's, you get a little scary rotating in the back because if they make a mistake, it's a touchdown. You know, if you make a mistake up front, it ain't good. But we've got two more layers back there in the back to hopefully get them down. And we were really good at red zone defense last year. We take a lot of pride in that. We worked, you know, third down today in red zone today. So it's 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 a little more scary to rotate in the back. With Sincere McCormick, uh, is there a certain amount of carries that is the right amount of carries for him, or how do you kind of set that benchmark as you head through this first game? Um, you just got to be – it's just common sense again. If, if he takes some shots, you know, then I can tell he's not as good as he should be. Then put the other kid out there. You just got to be smart first game. We tried to do that last year, and we looked up, and he had it about 30 times for, for over 200. It was – there were some spots on the field last year that we had the temperature at over 145 degrees. So uh, that that kid did that, there's just some certain kids that are different, right? There's some kids that can. I've coached some kids that can last all day, and there's some kids that just can't. So he's proven he can. It's just a matter of what the situation presents itself in, the, in that time. You only had two running backs listed on the depth chart. Is that the number who is going to actually play in this game, or are there others who might travel and factor in? Um, no, I, they'll, they'll be other ones that will play, we think. Uh, but I know those two are going to. Hey, Coach, can you kind of help us like lead the way up until the game? Like tomorrow, you guys go on the field against you know Illinois. Like, what, what, what are the stages before y'all actually get to the game on, on Saturday? Uh, well, Sunday is a big uh, preparation day. Uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of video to watch uh, from ourselves, so we, we didn't play the day before. We had a you know a mock game, so usually on Sunday you're grading your own video and then you're planning for your next opponent. And that was similar this Sunday. Then Monday they're off and they're in school, and on Tuesday it's just a base install day where it's first and second down. Uh, Wednesday is a third down red zone day and uh, tomorrow you'll work some more special situations coming out uh, tight red and some special situations in the kicking game and then uh, you'll you'll walk it on Friday and just review all those situations again and uh, then we'll get on the plane 
fly down there and meet in the hotel and go over it all again. And we'll get up Saturday morning and we'll walk it one more time. And then we hope that it goes just exactly as planned for y'all on Saturday so y'all talk about how smart we are and get us all pay raises. Jeff, I don't know if you could feel the uh, excitement surrounding the program outside this building. Is that something you have a, I guess, grasp of? You know, I've made a lot of friends since I've been here in 20 months. Uh, and I, I know my techs are picking up and a lot of, a lot of good people that I've become pretty close to. Uh, that's about the barometer of how I would know because uh, I'm pretty much here at, you know, 5 a.m. and getting home pretty late so I don't I don't see normal people uh, but a lot more text and a lot more excitement I feel that through my phone but I, I'd have to take your word on that JJ and j just the expectations you guys haven't shied away from it although you know you, you said you take it with a grain of salt just how do you get your players not to you know buy into that too much you know, it's, it's tough I agree um, but, you know it's why we are so committed to our brand I just, I've been a head coach now 17 years. I was a head basketball coach for a long time as well. And there's just things you can't control that you spend a lot of time worrying about. And you and I know it's boring for y'all because I just won't stay off of that. I just keep going back to that. But that's why you have a brand. That's why in your personal life you have some type of whatever that might be you're committed to, whether that's spiritual, whether that whatever that is for you in your own life that you always go back to because life is just so up and down. It's just football is the greatest analogy in the world of life. There's a lot of great things going to happen Saturday. There's a lot of bad things going to happen Saturday. Well, how are we going to handle that? Are we just going to stick with that? Are we going to get so high reading all these articles about us, how great we are, that we don't do the work? Or are we just going to dismiss that and stay true to the brand? That's, that's what's so great about football. It's my job as a head coach uh, and our, my coach's job to make sure those kids stay grounded. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.